Hey guys, I'm Nate and welcome to the Science AU Inform Podcast. I'm joined today with Tom. Hey guys, I'm Tom Sten, aka Courier Lord on platforms of social media and stuff. <laughs> you're, you're really convincing the audience to go off and follow you up I, this one. I'm an authority and just, you know, like, what is it? Um, Argument from authority is a fallacy and I feel like if I push that, I'd be uh, disingenuous. Then you'll be, <laughs> then you won't have to worry about anything ever again. You'll yep. be sorted for the rest of your life. Um, so ver- thank you very much for joining us on today's podcast. How's it going? Uh, tired. Tired? Yeah, I've, I've heard your uh, sleep schedule is a bit... Uh, messed up at the moment, so... Oh, shit, I just realised I woke up only on primes. Two, three, five, seven. <laughs> <laughs> only we would find that, like, awesomely, like, hilarious. That's so cool. That's actually... Yeah, okay. I'm a little less sour about my sleep. <laughs> yeah. Today's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, it is. Fuck um, you four. <laughs> yeah, get out of here. No one wants you around these parts. Um, so today we're going to be talking about uh, microbes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what a microbe is? See, here's the thing. I did two years of microbio, so should know what microbes is, but don't remember what <laughs> microbes are. <laughs> um, okay, so microbes is like a collective term that is usually given um, to bacteria. And these can either be like pathogen causing bacteria or they're like responsible for fermentation and a few other processes. Mm -hmm. Um, Some cool little things about microbes is that for every one human cell unit that you have in your body, you have about 10 microbes in you. So you're just like a skin sack full of microorganisms. Um, hopefully that sets like a good start line for the rest of your day. It's like, oh, I'm just a sack of microbes. Excellent. Um, and also, um, for every, uh, let me try and remember the numbers. So in our DNA, in our entire genome, if we pull it apart, you have about 20,000 human genes, depending on how you characterize what it is to be a human. Um, and you have maybe, I think it's like two to 20 million genes that are that are microbial in nature and origin so the definition of what we are as a human is is very very uh loosely Mm. termed also something really really cool that i only found out uh, a couple of hours ago while doing research for this is that um the microbes on your skin determine if you get bitten by mosquitoes a lot or not. Yeah, I ended up looking that up because I don't get eaten by mosquitoes. But my, yeah, neither do I. Yeah, but my ex used to get devoured. So I was like, oh, I wonder if there's science for that. I was like, ha, suck it, that's not going to change. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was super weird because you always hear the idea of like, oh, I must have mm. tasty blood or some stupid analogy like that. But yeah, the, the microbes on your skin produce particular chemicals which deter or attract mosquitoes Hmm. so if you get bitten a lot by mosquitoes then essentially your biome is trying to kill you yeah i mean (laughs) (laughs) it's trying to attract all the parasites to you well the way you got to think about it is right it's that uh well with every 10 units of micro uh human unit no 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 because we have one human unit is 10 is 10 microbial units microbial units thank you so we're the minority so they're just (laughs) they're just trying to kill the minority they take control of us yeah trying to get rid of the little guy so i i kept on going down the rabbit hole with this so um the microbes in your gut are really really important um this is this is something that's actually really really new in the sense of medicine we've only been investigating properly your uh, gut flora and fauna. If My you gut will. Flora, your, your, yeah, like yours mine. in particular. Oh, jinx. Oh, um, yeah. But we've only been studying that for maybe the last 10 years, like relatively thoroughly. <clears throat> Before that, we, we didn't even really know uh, how important that was for you as an individual human. So, as for you, Tom, yeah, yeah. no one else listening to this podcast, it's not important for you at all. No, that's why it was 10 years ago. Like, the ethics had to wait until I was like, like, <laughs> old enough that they could. Do clinical trials on you. Yeah. Uh, they're actually doing clinical trials on like two year olds at the moment that were just born about their biomes. I'll, I'll, I'll go to that. Two year olds, not just born, Nate. Yeah, no, no, they're not born. <laughs> God damn it. 
Hey guys, this is Tom. I'm running the informed podcast because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I actually am informed. Uh, they shut up. So from birth to two, they were um, measuring different levels of um, microbials that they had on them. So microbes, and they were categorizing them as either oral, fecal, vaginal, or skin. They were like the four. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Epidermis. There we go. Well, the other one. The, the other one. Skin. Um, and what they were doing was that they found that this is really, really weird. Did you know that if you are given uh, antibiotics within the first six months of being alive, then that increases your chances for things like depression, obesity, and like all these other things because the antibiotics kill off your yeah. natural like flora and fauna. As well as there's increased chances of like depression, anxiety, obesity, um, if you were born from C-section instead of being born out of the birth canal because of the microbes that are found with inside your mother coats your skin and mm. like you're you're born with protection, essentially. Whereas they found that the ones from C-section they mainly had microbes within their meat sack of a body yeah. um, that was only really found on skin. You must be great at parties. Your meat I'm, sack and, body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's up, meat sacks? Let's have a wild one. Um, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've... Because I've done a bit of reading on that stuff. So me and my, my now ex... We were like super obsessed with like raising the perfect kid when the opportunity came up. So like we read like those journal articles, like looked at pets. It's like, you know, dogs <laughs> are like the most efficient way to like increase your children's and like cats are shit. Yeah. They don't help out in that regard. <laughs> yeah. They were saying that they can tell uh, like if they had like a line of dogs and a line of kids, they would be able to tell which dog belonged to which yeah. child based purely off their microbiome. But in... Like, an opposing sense to that, you can live with someone, like, a, you can live with another human. Um, yeah, meat sack. That's yeah, like you can live it. with another meat sack. If you if you get two meat sacks hanging around, um, you get a butcher. Um, but Hey-o. if you uh, hang out with someone if, for, like, weeks, months, or even years, your as an adult, your, like, biome stays the same. Mm. Like, it very rarely changes. Where it, but if you have, like, an, an animal and you're a child and stuff like that, it fluctuates all the time and whatnot. Yeah, I normally don't let... let... Like other people that I live with lick my face, but my dog can like go to town. Yeah. <laughs> you don't let people. Oh man, you're missing out. Face licking is the best hobby to have, especially in Sydney. Walking up to strangers and licking their face is a really great way of meeting friends, as well as like in the most horrific sense, uh, getting organs removed from your body. If you just walk up to people, lick their face, like, oh yeah. <laughs> Okay. Sure, we missed like some steps between those. No, like, no. the face lost a kidney. Yeah, it's There's a very, a story there. it's a very, very fine transition. I feel <laughs> it, it works perfectly. Um, so yeah, there's some really like super weird stuff about um, you know your biomes and your microbiome, flora and fauna within your gut. Um, but also depending on that, there's something. It's, it's like all of the stuff that I'm saying right now is just from research that I've done in the last week, plus stuff that I've learned in university. And it all just seems like super obvious. But depending on the type of like bacteria that you have in your gut changes the type of medication that you can be given for like the same mm. illness because the bacteria in your gut determines how those things are metabolized. And if you give someone the wrong drug with a particular bacteria then it can be damaging to their liver yeah, because it's not probably shit the bed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they could leading to yeah. shitting the bed if you're taking the wrong drugs. Mm. But yeah, it's just so silly that that isn't common knowledge. Yeah, I think like, that's like the, the irritating thing. At least that's what I found like doing like science at uni was that after learning stuff, I was like, man, I was so retarded and not getting that quick. <laughs> yeah. I was dumb as <laughs> shit in high school. What have I done? <laughs> Yeah, and it, it, it's all, I guess, because, I don't know, we've both done science degrees mm. at university. And I think it allows you to go more in depth, but it also allows it to link mm. a lot better. Whereas I found, like, the curriculum, I'm now a high school science and math teacher, so I understand, like, how disjointed curriculum can be at times. <laughs> like, all right, guys, we're going to be doing chemical reaction, and our next unit, we're going to talk about space. Yeah. Like, let's go from one extreme to the other in a period of, like, five, six weeks. Um, it says, let's see how batteries work. Also, the power, powerhouse of a cell. Yeah, yeah. Mitochondria. Mitochondria. 
who also has different DNA to the rest of the human body. Yeah, and is only passed down from mother to daughter. Well, no, that's shit. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. No, what is it? It's, it's only tracked through your maternal. Lens. Yes. Yeah. 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 The more you know. Welcome to the Informed <laughs> Podcast. You'll learn all these facts that are randomly disjointed. Um, but continuing on with microbes, uh, how, how do you feel... So we were talking about this before. How mm. do you feel about fecal transplants? I was, I was, I was going to be put on a fecal transplant list thing, but I am non-compliant with medication. So, oh, really? Yeah, I'm an asshole. <laughs> which is would have been of great help, you'd think, but no. Yeah. <laughs> For fecal transplants, being an asshole is, nah, not one of the criteria, <laughs> unfortunately. No, no, no. So I was like, no, nah, I'm good. I probably won't eat enough of someone else's poo to make this a long time worth it. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> well, continue. Well, for those listening, uh, the poo is in a capsule. Crapsule? A uh, crapsule. <laughs> Uh, you don't have to eat it. Either you simply, um, with one to two fingers, depending on your preference, you put it in your pooper, <laughs> and, and the capsule dissolves, and it introduces the biome um, to your biome. Really, um, but chugging a poop pill is not a thing that I'm like. Super chug, salty. chug, chug, chug. Doing a handstand jump, with a jump, funnel. Jump. <laughs> Far. Oh, oh, God, hold it in, hold it in, bro. You've got this. Oh, oh, God. We're horrible people. Um, but so they did a recent there was a recent study that was done where they through fecal transplants they were actually able to decrease um, the physiological and behavioral symptoms of kids with autism that's pretty cool so they found that so a lot of people know what autism is and the, the you have like your um, autistic spectrum disorder and there are lots of different uh, behavioral disabilities that fit on that spectrum, um, but a lot of people don't know is that uh, children with autism, actually, or people with autism in general, suffer gastrointestinal issues. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like stomach pains and cramping um, and diarrhea and a few others. What they did was in this study, so sample size is small, it was only 18. Um, Effect size, significance, the, everything else. Okay. Yeah, it's. I, they definitely want to push. They're looking for funding at the moment to increase the sample size to see if they get the same results um, to make it more credible, I guess. But what they did was that they gave the um, 18 participants, I think they were between the ages of 16 and 23, they gave them um, antibiotics to completely wipe their gut biome. Um, not to the best of their degree, I don't know how well we can completely like clean strip the bacteria out of your digestive system. It'd like to be pretty dead, right? If they did like a completely clean, you wouldn't have to do it within like 10 minutes, <laughs> like you have a 10 minute window of opportunity, you go through, wipe it, and then refill it. Yeah, not oh, refill it. Um, so and then what they did was they got fecal transplant from people who they considered to have like a, a healthy gut biome. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was an eight week process. I think it was the, maybe the first week or two. They, it was like heavy doses of, uh, liquid fecal transplant. So crapsules. Mm-hmm. Um, and then they were given kind of like toppers. Boosters. Boosters, <laughs> uh, fecal boosters, but it wasn't fecal. We'll specify that it was just the bacteria sprinkled in smoothies and was given to the children with autism. Um, that sounds like a sick, evil yeah. doctor thing. I'm going to take kids with autism and I'm going to shit in their milkshake. Oh, is this a chocolate milkshake? <laughs> yes, it is, little Timmy. Yes, oh, it God. is. Um, but they found that they had no gut problems. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so of the 18 children who were tested, or and young adults, I should say, um, a lot of them came back with... Like, no diarrhea, no stomach cramps, no tummy aches or anything. Um, as well as, because of this, so they don't know how it worked. <laughs> this, is, this is insane. So they don't know how it worked because um, they, they knew that because of, you know, their gut essentially working properly because of the microbes, that that would aid with, like, digestion and stuff like that. But they actually, their behavior got better. Hmm. I think... Um, 20, 22% of them, they were saying, their behavior or, like, incidences of outbursts and decreased mm-hmm. um, dramatically. 
but they don't know why. Yeah. It'd be, I guess it is like one of those things where it's like heaps complicated. It could be like, oh, kids in pain have like a lower tolerance of blah blah blah, so like it's a mediating factor. I, or if it's just like strictly like, oh, they're like, hormones have changed and stuff due to like production of... Who knows? Yeah, they, yeah, they might be metabolizing food in a particular way. That they're getting particular metabolites that mm. their body didn't have, which was essential for a particular neural function. It's like, oh, like, your tryptophan's actually gone up. You uh, can actually make good things now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Happy thoughts. Yeah. Like, <laughs> instead of, you know, overstimulus and fear mm. of the outside world. Um, would you get a crap shell? I mean, I mean, I'm more open to it. See, my thing is, I would do it. But How open? Complaint. Are you loose butthole or tight butthole about crap shells? My butthole is quite tight. Um... <laughs> Uh, but no, I'd, I'd, I'd be up for it. I guess, yeah, it's more a compliance thing. It would irritate me if it's like someone's like, eat turd, and I'm like, Tom, you don't commit to anything. You're like, just gonna, you're gonna have like... You have to eat turd for the next eight weeks. Oh, I'll probably only do it for two weeks though, guys. Yeah. And then I'll just be like, what the crap am I doing? Yeah, my, like, yeah, my news resolution will be eat more turd. Like, that's... <laughs> 2017. Coming at ya. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. When so, shit hits the fan. Have you seen the, um... Oh, I accidentally stumbled upon it because I was looking up uh, workout supplements and some workout supplements have been shown to uh, decrease symptoms of autism. Have you seen that? No, I haven't. Like, if I knew this was what we were talking about, I would have looked it up. It's, um, there's, uh, some, I think it's either... So the alpha lipoic acid... Um, alpha lipoic acid, if we want to get the, um, the chirality right. Yeah. Um, or it was acetyl L-carnitine. Yeah. I think it was one of the two of them has been shown that like in moderately high doses to have an effect on... Autistic symptoms in children? I don't know, that's right. I'll look it up for you. And I'll yeah, 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 no, definitely. Yeah. No, that's, that, that definitely sounds like a cool article to read with that one. Yeah, so you can have that going one end and then up the other end, you, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> in and out, both yeah. sides, mm. at the same time. Um, chug, chug, <laughs> chug, 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 but chug. <laughs> um, so going on from that, they were having a look at, um, they might be able to use similar methods for like fecal transplant um, to be able to cure obesity. Mm -hmm. So they did a trial in rats. So I only briefly read over this article, so let me see if I can remember it. Um, if you have a look at two people's DNA, um, they one could be, let's just say one is physically like actually obese and one of them is, is skinny or what is considered to be healthy mm -hmm. um, with body mass index, even though that's a horrible determining factor yeah. for health. Um, what they found was that looking at the DNA... 60% of the time they can determine if someone actually is obese or not just from their DNA but they found that if you check their gut biome that you can determine if someone is obese or not, uh, obese or not at an accuracy of 95% that's really cool so you can have a look at someone's gut and be like oh judging because of these different percentages of these different bacteria this person is more likely to be obese and they could then to a degree use crapsules to uh, increase or decrease particular percentages of gut bacteria, which would then aid in a person losing weight. And they could like customize that individually for the person depending on those particular individual percentages. So they had like fat mice and they had skinny mice and they took the poo. I'm gonna do this like in a really crass basic yeah. way. They took the poo from the skinny rat and put it in the big rat's butthole and the big rat um, with the skinny rat crap in it got skinny. So it actually lost weight. Can, the, can we, can we self-propagate fat, now skinny rat poop <laughs> into other rats and kind of... We'll make, we'll make a t-shirt out of it. So, we get, so what I'm hearing is if we can create a human centipede of fat rats with a skinny <laughs> rat at the front, <laughs> with the, we'll yeah, end up with a yeah, really yeah. skinny eventually, rat Eventually, yeah. eventually, uh, I don't know how long it will take or if that is an effective mode of getting poop inside someone <laughs> straight down the gullet. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It's, it's so cool that we've like, only, it's cool, but also like concerning to a particular degree that we've only starting to identify the different, you know, physical and mental ailments that are associated with just like your gut and how you like, mm. process food. Just, it's so weird. It's just no, like how you break down and metabolize food determines how you feel and how you think. Yeah, it's like, it's, uh, we think inputs affect outputts. Yeah. Oh my gosh. What, what a twist. I think it's important to note there that you're like fat shaming microbials. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, Man, get your microbes in check. Yeah. What are you doing? You got the fatty microbes. Get them out of you. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Stop. Not okay, now. Did you just I... assume my microbes? 
I can look at your body. You do not have fatty micros. Yeah, buddy. yeah. I don't have any. Well, I grew up on a farm for the first yeah, five yeah, years. Yeah. yeah, and I had my. I almost got my arm torn off by a cow. And on that farm, we had a cow, e i e i o, and a one armed child. <laughs> my mum came out of the kitchen because she heard like me giggling and squealing. And she came around the corner and I had my entire arm <laughs> in the mouth of a cow because I'd fed it grass, but I hadn't let go of the grass. And it was licking my salty <laughs> armpits. So there was just me with my entire arm in a cow's mouth, like squealing and giggling. And my mum lost her shit. Because essentially, I think I may have been like two or three. This cow could have just, like, shifted its head and yeah. just tore my arm out. Dude, you could be an adult and the cow could do that. Like, yeah, cows yeah, are yeah. Like, strong. Yeah. Oh, yeah they're, yeah. they're strong. Like, incredibly strong. I've also been electrocuted by a barbed wire fence that was to stop bulls Wait. from going into a dam. Okay. No, I need I need this story because if it was an electric fence, I'd be like, okay, Nate's a bit of a dumbass, didn't realise it's electric. But it's a barbed wire electric fence, which means you can see that you're definitely not meant to touch that. And you're like, no, I'll be cool. So, okay. <laughs> this is a super embarrassing story. Um, so, you know the, the classic children's game, Spotlight? Yeah. Yeah, so in Western Australia, where I grew up, we have paddocks. We have lots of empty space. That's why I'm so loud, because there's so much space in between people in West Australia that we have to shout to yeah. communicate. Um Putting the boy in boisterous. Exactly. That's all capitals. Yeah. Uh, exclamation mark. Uh, what happened was that we were playing Spotlight and we went into someone else's property. Rebel. Um, man. <laughs> I'm totes hardcore. You have no idea. Um, and it was... We didn't realise at the time, because it was late at night, that it was a dam. And... The water made, didn't give it away? Like, no, 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 no. We couldn't see. We, we couldn't see a thing. You just, like, like swim. like, man, this ground no, 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 is, like, it so wasn't, wet. It wasn't... So viscous. It wasn't, like, the edge... It wasn't, like, a swimming pool where it was, like, a, maybe a metre from the pool and there was the fence. It was, like, it was quite large. Um, but we walked in completely unscathed. It was mm-hmm. fine. Um, <laughs> and what happened was... So, I can't... I, th- I think it was, like normal fencing barbed wire than electric yeah. so they usually have the lines in particular order stratification of fencing <laughs> yes exactly <laughs> um, and what happened was that we went, went onto this um, random person's land um, but we could see their house mm-hmm. so that we knew that they were there and um, oh, this is so embarrassing so we're playing spotlight uh, and eventually we got called back um, but this wasn't before the neighbour had told us to uh, piss off mm-hmm. because we were on his property and he saw the flashing lights. Um, and we're heading back and little did we know he turned the electric fence on as we were coming back. So we walked over it, completely yeah. fine, unscathed. Um, and the group was like, God, what if he's turned the fence on? Because we've just come across it and I couldn't hear it, but... Some of the group were like, oh, can't you hear that hum? And I was like, you guys are full of shit. Electric fences don't hum that loud. Um, it's just what a I, myth, guys. What I, found out, what I found <laughs> out, unless it's of a particular voltage. Um, mm-hmm. So there may have been a girl in the group that I liked. Would have been on. Always is. Always is. Uh, so I was like, don't worry. I've got this. <laughs> Set on the electric fence. Um, and at that moment, (laughs) I said, see, it's not, (laughs) and then I didn't get to finish my sentence. Um, I blacked out for maybe, I think it was maybe five, ten seconds, and I woke up on the ground on the other side of the fence. Um, yeah, it was, they'd recently, well not recently, within the last year, they'd had a bull that had completely just ignored the electric fence mm. and just walked into the... It's like, oh, water. Walked into the <laughs> dam and drowned. So they get stuck in the mud, oh. fatigued and drown. Yeah. So, and um, anyone who knows the uh, the current pricing of a bull knows that they, they, they're quite expensive. Um, so they were like, we're not going to lose one again. So they cranked it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, and to deter bulls and cows and, uh, and small children. Um, which it didn't. It, it, it wasn't very effective at doing that. Um, I had... Name was Bullish, but not Bullish. Yeah, 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 exactly. 
No, I wasn't as sturdy as a bull. I wasn't built like one either. Yeah. Um, had slight burny marks on my hands as well as my genitalia. Nice. Is there pics? No. <laughs> pics or GTFO? Uh, no, there are no pics because I think I may have been uh, 11 at the time. Ooh, illegal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much very illegal. illegal. Very illegal to take photos of that. <laughs> so did you uh, get the girl? No. Surprised. <laughs> <laughs> What a twist. <laughs> so you didn't get the girl at the end. <laughs> All I'm hearing is, I don't know if, if you guys have seen Nate, but he looks very Thorish, and I feel like this is the first time he got a taste of the lightning. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that is when he became the Asgardian known as Thor. Yep. <laughs> um, Jesus Christ. We found some, we've found life that we think might be the original life, and they're called Asgardians. Oh, shit. I thought we were still talking about your testicles. No, no. <laughs> They've, they've named, like, different... They found them in, like, hot springs and they're different um, microorganisms. Yeah. Like, but they think that because of the particular DNA, they think they might be the first versions of life. That's really cool. And they're calling the group as guardians. And they're like... I can't remember the suffixes because there's multiples at the end yeah. of the name, but they all start with, like, Thor and Loki and, <laughs> and Odin. Oh, that's sick. Yeah. Oh, man. Go get me some Odins. Go to get me some Odin extreme files in me. Oh, that'd be so cool. Um, My job oh, then did your stomach is... biome. Probably just kill you. Yeah, like, <laughs> thank you for taking this back to gut biome because we've taken it on such a twist. Not my first rodeo. No, you can't pull things. <laughs> oh, God. Back we go. Hashtag <laughs> back for pull things. Um, so, going back to bacteria, um, so, you know, individual plans for like obesity and stuff mm-hmm. like that, yada, yada, yada. Um, also, your immune system is heavily affected by if you're introduced to like particular um, uh, antibiotics as well as bacteria, mm. depending on like what ages you're introduced to them. But so, do you know what a superbug is? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So superbugs, incredibly dangerous. They are strains or like versions of a, a deadly virus or bacteria that mainly bacteria. Sorry, that. Uh, aren't affected by the drug that is supposed to kill them. Mm. So we have like um, last resource drugs, which is like it's either going to kill the drug, it's either going to kill you or it's going to kill the bacteria. It's, it's a bit of a gamble. It's the cancer treatment of, of yeah. yeah. Um, but at the moment, so the main issue is that is like the over administration of antibiotics as well as. Um, being incredibly clean. So, you know, the kids that, like... Mm. This is really, really weird, but the kids that always have, like, the disinfectants and the, the mothers that, like, Windex their face, essentially. Yeah. They, their immune system is uh, severely compromised because they're not introduced to these bacteria. Um, they're thinking... Same thing happens for hospitals. So, you go to a hospital to get better, but a hospital is the most likely place that you're going to get sick. Yeah, like, MRSA is, like, rampant in hospitals. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So there's this crazy scientist who's partnered up with this um, architect who wants to make bacteria-friendly buildings. It's literally just painting the wall with turd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, just painting the wall in shit. Yeah, just brush up, oh, brush it. on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wipe, then brush. Wipe, then brush. Um, but they were thinking that instead of, like, you know, using... Pro- dis- produce. <laughs> oh, God. All right, guys, we really need to paint this room. How many kids do you reckon it will need? Oh, maybe four. All right, guys, give them the prune juice. All right, guys, if you just want to shit in this bucket, that'd be great. Oh, yuck. Ugh, okay. Yay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's a it's a new painting technique when shit hits the fan. Ooh. We just have a fan on the floor and we just chunk shit into it and we code the room. I'm more of a shit dynamite kind of guy. Oh, nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. Is, is the turd got dynamite in it or is the dynamite got turd in it? No, no, the, the turd has dynamite, dynamite in it. Okay, cool. Just checking. Yeah. Because turds are also quite combustible. If you were to yeah. get the particular <laughs> aspects, you can make poo TNT. Uh, anyway, <laughs> but yeah, they want to make... Um, hospitals and different buildings and stuff like that that have what we know to be good bacteria well, that's his profile like, like wow yeah you're like so, you're so not okay now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no fat genes no bad genes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, no bad microbes no fat microbes no nah, man 
Don't want to. So judgmental. Get the fuck out of. <laughs> get the fuck. My body is my own temple. It's not your own. I'm temple. gonna build a wall. <laughs> I'm gonna build a wall around me. It's going to be my dance. You are the. <laughs> <laughs> you're the build vo- a thicker wall. You're the vocal minority of the. Of yeah. You. I have some uh, un unfavorable uh, perspectives on my body as a temple. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, he wants to get hospitals, and he's he's currently working with a designer who's making these uh, like three D printable spheres that have all these little nooks and crannies in it that you can soak in healthy cultures of bacteria and hang them in just like hang them in hospitals and stuff like that. And if you like brush up against one, or if you touch one, or if you interact with one in a particular way, then you get that healthy bacteria spread onto your skin. And um, then they're hoping that that would essentially make you healthier. So, so fondling balls is good for you? Yeah, yeah. Fondling balls is excellent for your health. But what they're thinking is that they also want to make um, teething toys. Ooh, that's for, really cool. For babies that have healthy bacteria in them. So while they're like teething and gnawing away, Mm. their body is slowly being introduced to these healthy forms of bacteria that they need. Um, And they want to be able to like customize it because so if you test the fecal um, samples of like a particular child, you can see what they have. Mm. And then you could customize the teething toy for that. Or you could either customize it for if they were had a natural birth or like a Mm. C-section birth. That's really, really cool. I can't wait for the anti-vaxxers to shit the bed over this. <laughs> you, are you saying that toy has bacteria in it? Yeah. You're filthy. You're a filthy animal. Oh, my God. Oh. I reckon it's such a cool idea, though. That's probably the favorite thing you've dropped on me today. Like, I haven't heard anything related to that. I just love the old baby idea of the baby. Like, oh, God damn. He's, you know like you know how little kids, they get, like, yeah. favorite, to- like, chew toys and stuff? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Grandpa, I was like... Oh, we have to, like, wean him off that one because he had, like, way too much lactobacillus or <laughs> Oh, this is going to be so hard. Oh, my God. Imagine, imagine that, though, if it, that was, like, a learning thing of, like, oh, I chew on this toy, my gut feels good, or mm. I feel healthy, or I feel more energetic, I'm going to keep playing with this nom, toy. Nom, nom, yeah, nom, yeah. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Imagine, like, pacifiers. Yeah. That, like, because we all know that pacifiers are essentially just, like, a, a plastic balloon of a certain thickness. Yeah. Imagine if they had, like, microscopic pores with like good bacteria that you could like top up man <laughs> patent let's patent that idea holy shit we can't put this this podcast is now being yeah. locked in the vault into a we're gonna cut we're gonna cut the section out and just <laughs> so if you if any of you are listening to the podcast and you hear a random skip <laughs> uh that's because we just cut out uh, an awesome idea for the future actually that'd be really cool you could like do like reload capsules at the back you know how it's, like, yeah yeah button. And it inserts the back cartridges and... that you like change yeah out. and it diffuses across the like the rubber membrane you have on the outside we were, yeah, this is money mate. Money yeah, made, yeah, right yeah, yeah. Uh, scientific Nate goes into <laughs> business mode and hey, just like I can make millions of this idea. Uh, but yeah, so he wants to um, do that. He was also like talking about um, so there are particular like buildings. I can't remember where it was, but he was talking with this architect. There's a room that they have that's full of trees, mm-hmm. and the air conditioning system gets pumped through it. That's kind of cool. The tree, a tree's good for your. So they filter out all the carbon dioxide and all the pollutants in the air and then just nice breeze. So they, they basically, so Did the idea... Know? I thought like um, trees, when they respire, end up using like a shitload of the... Oh, so yeah. So for those of you listening, um, trees don't just photosynthesize. They also respire as well. Um, but I think they, they photosynthesize at a higher rate than what they respire, yeah. but not at night. At night, they do respire more because they don't have light to be able to photosynthesize. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But they have a room with a massive, like, sunroof, Mm -hmm. and it's just full of, like, vegetation, and they just pump the air through, Mm. and it's part of their air conditioning system. That'd be really clever if you put... Because there's, like, journal articles they've looked at. If you you walk around greenery, it has a better effect on your psyche than... I want to get a tree. Like, I want to get, like, a a tree Mm. for my room. I have a very, very small room at the moment, so Mm. the idea of having, like, something else in here is is slightly daunting. (laughs) Except for you, Tom, you're allowed in here. Um, but yeah, I want to get a tree. We're recording from Nate's bed. It's yeah, yeah, we're sitting, it's, it's quite comfy. No Lots pants. of room. No <laughs> pants. No pants podcast. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the guy who had the, like, the microbial idea was talking to the guy who designed this building and was like, this is what I want to do. Mm. Are you on board? And the guy was just like, shit, yeah, this is, hey, this yeah. is sick. They've also, 
Um, they want to... Where was it? New York. I think New York is prone to flooding sometimes. Or there's some place in America that's relatively prone I to flooding. But what they want to do is they want to put bacteria in paint so that you paint the walls and it's activated by water during flooding that kills like fungi and mold and stuff like that so that if there is any flooding or anything like that um sure it will get damp and damaged and stuff Mm. like that but your chances of having a like green rot throughout Mm. your house is going to be decreased because you're going to have bacteria in the paint and in the walls and the floor that kill or out compete mold that's really really cool what what do you did you read much more on that? Like, how do you have them, like, activated by shitloads of water? I'm assuming you can't desiccate most of them, right? Are they using a fungi? Like, what are they using? What's the... What are they using in the paint? Yeah, like... A what's... bacteria. Okay, so, like, how do you get one that's so water-loving that out-competes fungi? Mm. Does fungi grow fast, like, relative to bacteria? I think bacteria grows quicker than fungi. Yeah? Because it's a simpler unit. I mean, that kind of makes sense. I think, like, an example, E. coli divides, I think, every... I think it's every 30 minutes, E. coli divides. Mm-hmm. Um, fungi, on the other hand, because it's a more complex organism, would probably take longer. But I do know that fungi grows relatively quick. Yeah. Like, you can be eating a loaf of bread, and then the next morning it'd be moldy. You guys need to clean out your kitchen. Yeah, we need to have a bit of a clean-out. That's something that we're working on. Boys' uh, night. Yeah, <laughs> let's clean up the kitchen. No <laughs> pants uh, cleaning kitchen session. Which um, is worrying, because you do no shirt most of the time, so if you're doing no pants... Dude, it's too hot all the time. I'm sweating so much at the moment. We're sitting oh. in a tiny room. Um, I'm wearing 48-hour antiperspirant, put on an hour ago, still sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it lied to me. It yeah. lied. Um, but yeah, it's too hot all the time. I came down to Sydney hoping that it would be cooler. I'm mm. from Brisbane. Uh, no, it's not. It's, it's, not, it's not. It's been horrible. I like to think it's us. I think it's yeah. we're too hot. <laughs> we're too hot. And wherever we Dude, go, it doesn't I, matter. I run hot. Yeah. I replaced uh, Kieran Boyd, who, lives, yeah. who used lovely to be here. Guy. Lovely Check guy. Lovely guy. on Twitter. Super Kieran attractive. Um, can rap really well. You can. Last night. Good Lo- job, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, but apparently I replaced him perfectly because he also walked around nude most of the time. Mm. I have a friend <laughs> that comes over to my house and walks around nude. Oh, that's quite comfortable of him. Yeah, he's, we're a very welcoming and accommodating house. <laughs> take your shoes off. Take your pants off. Take your shirt off. Take it all off. You're welcome. And we play a lot of board games on a coffee table. So he ends up bending over and then like you walk up the hall and you see straight through him. You know that... Have you seen I the, can see light. It's like, you know the topology of a human is a donut? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You have an opening and an ending and you're just piping in between. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's when... It was super... Trying to explain to my students that your gut is outside your body. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, super weird to them, and they're like, "What?" And I'm like, "You're a pipe." And I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, sure, your your piping doesn't go straight. It has like nooks and mm. like enlarged areas and stuff like that. But you you are a pipe. Yeah, and when you make out, you're just a poop tube. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh god. What are you making out with? What are you, you doing? Know another person? Because there's yeah. an ass at either end, and it's just this huge pipe. It's <laughs> shit comes out. It comes out at either end <laughs> of the pipe and making out in the middle. Yeah. I think that's an excellent, <laughs> excellent way to end the podcast. Today we've talked about poo, cows. Nate's <laughs> balls. My balls. Just other autism. Balls. Other balls as well in hospitals. Mm. Uh, bacteria, paint, autism. We've, we've covered so many different things today. We've, we've had a good hustle, I think. That's an excellent place to end it. Uh, so thank you very much, guys, for listening to the Science Inform AU podcast. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram as Science Inform AU. You can also check out the podcast as well as some of the articles that I'm writing on informau.com. Thank pretty you very good. much for joining us, man. That's pretty good. I, I Again, just to spruce some Nate. I would probably... Do you have your uh, body shots on Instagram, bud? <laughs> <laughs> I do not have any uh, body shots. I have Actually, I have them on Instagram. You do? Instagram, yeah. guys. Highly recommend it's Instagram. <laughs> Good looking fella, not just brainy. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Thanks for the plug. Bye, guys. Bye.